breathe on me. Okay, so today we're going to go over chapter 5 and chapter 6. Um, so for here, um, if you guys read, it was a nice short read for chapter 5. Pretty straightforward. It's just understanding how to do reconciliations, which if you've never heard before, this is where you are comparing your bank statement to your actual check register. Now, oftentimes what you're going to notice is that when you're dealing with making deposits to the bank, it doesn't go in right away. Mm -mm. You're always going to have either a two or possibly um, five business day delay okay so the minute that you um deposit your stuff okay depending on how much you deposit right if you go to any bank around here you know with the new technology um they they normally say oh um if you make your deposits in cash or whatever it is usually you would have the money right away now that's only if it's like a hundred dollars now if you're if you're dumping thousands and thousands of dollars in your bank right, right in, one, in one day, you're not going to be able to see that money until the following day, okay? Same thing with bank deposits, okay? If you, if you have a bunch of checks and you're depositing it in, you, will, you can be available to take about maybe $100 out of that check right away. But for most cases... Those kind of checks, um, you would either have to go inside to fully cash it out or three, when you deposit the check, it's taking it out from the, your, either your customer or your vendor, whoever, whoever that wrote you that check, it's taking it out of their bank. And if their bank does not have enough money to transfer you the money, then that's the reason why your checks don't go through. They don't clear right away. So this is why we need to make sure that our bank matches our check register because for our check register, we write a check, it's automatically calculated, but did we, we never sent the check out. So what um, my cat check register is doing for me is making sure that I'm having enough money and I'm writing these checks. And when I write the checks, it recalculates it so I know how much money I should have at the end of the day. But remember, when you send out a check, it's also based on whether your customer or your vendor, if they turn it in, okay? So that's what that's also one of the reasons why we need to check our bank statement because if you wrote a check to your vendor and they haven't deposited it yet, that's when you have to call your uh, vendor and be like, did you receive my payment yet? I hope you did. And if they say, yes, we did, we just haven't had time to deposit it then that's when you can you know find that discrepancy and make sure that they receive your check and that they're not you know either frauding you or no one else got the check you know what I mean so it's a process when you're dealing with bank statements so making sure that all your transactions all your checks cash whatever credit card transactions as um works out and everything pans out and you did exactly what you were um you paid them for what you got and you received money for what you um, sold. So with that, there are a few things that you can um, do with this. So if you read right here, it says that you can actually reconcile any um, account. Um, you, can, um, you can reconcile um, pretty much a bank statement, your credit card statement, your accounts receivable, any other current assets. So here it will say right here um, that you are able to um, reconcile those. And you can even reconcile your long-term liabilities and equity. So pretty much you can, you, you're able to actually reconcile pretty much anything, any account. Okay? So, but in today's focus, we are going to just be focusing on bank statements and credit card statements because usually those two are the more often um, statements you would actually be receiving. Um, and um, usually um, for credit cards, for example, they charge you every month of interest, right? You have to pay them um, every month. 
So they normally would send you a monthly statement and same thing with the bank, right? The bank, you often would want to make sure that you update your bank as often as possible because you never want to have, again, um, you wrote a check and it's not clearing, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, move, move forth. So uh, rec uh, rec reconciling bank accounts. Okay, so let's go ahead and be on page 144. Okay, so here is um, a, um, a copy of a bank statement. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, nowadays, um, I believe this is paperless, so you wouldn't have to have all this information, but for bank... Um, purposes or for business purposes it is generally recommended that you're able to get a physical copy of this so here it gives me my um, beginning balance like what I started in the month then it gives me my ending balance for the uh, for that uh, for the end of that month and usually it will give you all your uh, deposits and all your checks that you've written and then it should give you your total ending balance at the end of the day. So here is the beginning balance. Here's adding all your deposits. Here's all writing all your checks. And then here's the um, ending balance as of the end of the month. So in this case, we're focusing on January 31st of 2019. So here, um, as you can see, it gives you a description of all of your um, deposits you've written, but also all the checks that you've written as well, all down here. And um, if you've if you just withdrawed from the company or from the bank, it gives you right here the information as well as here are the charges that they charge you for having them as a bank. I'm sorry. Yeah, here's the interest that they that you have collected. All right. So. All of these three sec these four sections are going to make a lot more sense when we move into uh, learning about it in accounting. But the, for the sake of this purpose of this class, your main focus is just to, to um, look at this information and pretty much check mark them off like a list. And I'll go ahead and um, go I'll go ahead and show you the example. So here I've already uploaded the um, the classroom file it will be bank reconciliation 18 so here we are we're gonna go ahead and get started now usually they recommend the very first thing before even starting a reconciliation is to make sure you check your um, your deposits and make sure that there is nothing in your undeposited funds okay this is just to ensure that when you are comparing your um, bank statement to your um, actual account that um, that there is no extra money left over. On top of that, it also wants to make sure that you clear everything out as far as the um, specific month that you're actually doing your bank reconciliation for. So um, again, just making sure that there's nothing in your undeposited funds. Okay, so... I'm going to, I want to reconcile my bank account. So there are two ways to be able to do that. Okay. The first one is going to be here on the home page right here with the big icon that says reconcile. And you can also go to the banking uh, menu at the top and you'll be able to reconcile um, right here. Reconcile. All right. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and click this and you're going to be given options right here. You can be given options to either do your um, to do your checking account, your money markets, your savings, your credit cards. So right here, pretty much all the accounts that you can do as far as um, as far as what they allow you to do is going to be here on this list here. OK. But in this case, I just want to only do my bank checking account because I want to view my bank statement. Okay, so 
Um, the first thing that you want to make sure that is um, that holds true is that the um, that the statement balance. I mean that the balance at the end of the day, making sure that the balance of the um, making sure that the beginning balance matches your actual statement. So that's always number one. You want to make sure that you, when you start off your reconciliation, that you're starting on the same number. Now, this is this is um, you were doing one bank reconciliation out of like um, out of however long the business has been uh, operating for. So with that, it's um, this could be like. This is already done for you. So just making sure that you validate that this uh, 14000 matches in your uh, bank statement as the beginning balance. And here in this case, they do match. Okay. They do match 14000 as your beginning um, bank. Okay. So right here. All right. Another important thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are doing the correct bank statement, okay? So if you're doing a January bank statement uh, or bank reconciliation, make sure that you have the correct form, I meant the correct um, uh, bank statement to make sure that this is for the Jan for January 31st, um, okay? So here, making sure I have that. And then I am going to be looking into 542492. 542492. Okay. So this is what, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this ending balance right here. Okay. So 542492 is my ending balance in my bank. Uh, this is what my bank currently holds. And what QuickBooks is going to ask you is, what is your ending balance in your um, in your bank statement? So in this case, my bank statement tells me I have fifty four twenty four and ninety two cents. Okay. So yes, and then what's going to happen after that is it's going to ask you a few things, a few more extra questions. So. First thing is going to be, did you get a service charge? Okay. Did you get did you get charged for using this um, bank uh, for services? Whether you purchase checks from them or whether you um, you just bank with them in general, they usually would charge you um, um, a fee for that. And let's scroll down. So we have interest here. We have other um, withdrawals, and then here, service charges. So we do have a service charge for January 31st, and it's for the amount of $10. So I'm going to go ahead and validate that right here, that I did get a service charge for $10, okay? And it's for January 31st. And here, the account is going to be, um, I think it's bank service charges okay and then in this one uh, we do have a class for it it's called overhead and what overhead is is basically um, it's in, it's it's a class that doesn't affect whether it does because we use class as um, a determining factor between our two different store locations San Jose and Walnut Creek we created a third one called overhead that doesn't affect any store on either side okay it only affects the company in general and overall and we just call it it overhead okay now once we've done that now it's asking me what is my interest earned so i'm gonna go ahead and look at my bank statement and i'm gonna go ahead and scroll up again and it's telling me that here for interest i've earned on january 31st a total of um, eight dollars and sixty two cents okay so here I'm gonna validate that I got eight dollars and sixty two cents in interest on the 31st again um, this is interest income okay because 
This one is what we earn, okay? And we have um, um, an account called interest income. And then here we have bank service fees. So this is an expense right here. And right here, this is an, um, an, uh, uh, a revenue. And this one, because it doesn't affect either um, San Jose or... Um, San Jose or Walnut Creek, I'm going to go ahead and use overhead. Now, I've already filled out all this stuff, and I made sure that the date is correct, and this is the ending balance. This is where I can go ahead and say, you know what? Let's continue. So when I add that in there, what you're going to notice is you're going to get this form right here. This form right here is basically a list of everything from your check register. So it is also organized exactly how um, it's going to be organized by date. And then right here, it will be determining whether you wrote a check or here's going to be whether you um, completed a deposit or not on these days. So this is where you're going to compare your bank statement and saying which check actually went through and cleared in your bank, okay? Now, before we get that started, I want to also look at what are the few things are that at the bottom. So at the bottom, it basically shows you a little bit of um, a little bit of information. So it right now, it is telling you that you began with fourteen thousand dollars, right? And then on this little corner, left corner here, it's going to um, subtract. This is this is your calculate. This is your calculated. Um, uh, difference between your bank and your um, your uh, check register. So here, it shows here that we've already calculated our um, our service charges. Interest that we earned was uh, right here, and then ending balance. So as you can see, we need to get to uh, five thousand uh, four hundred and twenty four um, dollars and our ending balance. As you can see. We have not cleared anything, so right now we are over by eight thousand dollars. Okay, so that means we so what we want to reach is the number zero. Zero is going to let us know that everything in the bank matches everything that we have in our check register. Now, in our check register, obviously, we have written checks that haven't cleared yet. But that's okay. That's not the purpose of this thing. The purpose of this is to make sure that my bank and my check register match 100% so I know where my money is at at all times. Okay? So we our goal is to get to the balance of zero. We want to make sure that they match 100%. So right now, my bank is, is $14,000. I'm trying to get it to exactly $5,000. So I need to um, calculate all. I need to make sure which, which checks cleared and which deposits have cleared um, in order to reach to zero. Okay. Now let's up here allows you to also modify what you're looking at. So this right here is all of my checks and all of my deposits that happen uh, throughout this entire company. So if you look carefully at the dates, you're going to see January, December dates is the first one, and you're also going to see February dates on here. Now what you can do is if you go up to the top here, you have a little, um, little um, check thing that you can do that says hide all transactions after statements end date. So my statement end date, if you guys remember, I set it up as January 31st, right? So if I were to if I were to click this, it would basically take away all of my February transactions that I have done. Okay? Now you can do this, um, but for any reason, um, yes, yeah, so you can do this just to help you organize your thoughts, uh, but also organize your um, checks and your deposits. So you're, let's say, in, you're in the, you're like almost close to the end of February, you might be having a lot of transactions or a lot of checks that you've written. 
or a lot of deposits that you have done. Um, but with that, you want to make sure um, that, you know, when you click this, that you only see everything that happened in January. All right. And um, things that can possibly clear would be of December, um, would be anything that happened in December. So again, we are making sure that all of our transactions that happened after January 31st are gone. Okay. So in this case, we are going to go ahead and start comparing our, um, our bank statement to our, um, to our check register. So if we come over here, this is where I'm going to go ahead and focus on certain sections in my uh, bank statement. So in this case, I want to be looking at all of my deposits and um, then I'm going to go for, I'm going to start off with my checks first. So let's go ahead and see which checks have cleared. So in this case, my checks that have cleared so far is 325, 326, 327, and then you got 601, 603, and 604. So I'm missing right here already 602. And um, here I've only done um, three checks here. So 25, 26, and 27 has cleared. So I'm going to go ahead and um, look at my bank. And I'm going to check mark off the ones that I just read off. So here, 325 is there. So make sure that you validate it by check marking it right there. 326 is I already accidentally check marked that one, but yes, it's done. It's there. And 327. I'm gonna go ahead and check mark that. Okay. Then I remember I had 601, 603, and 604. Okay. So um, when I'm doing my checks, I want to make sure that, okay, so even though I did look at the check numbers, you also want to also check out the actual check number, um, check amount balance and making sure that these also went into your register, uh, went into your bank the same way. So if I were to look here, I should be getting, um, I should have a 465, a 260, uh, 276, a 128, and all those numbers. Okay, you want to make sure that each check number matches every balance number on here. So here, I validate that, yes, I did write a 465. I did write a 276. Reason being is because you may have accidentally recorded it in your register as a completely different number, okay? But using, you know, with QuickBooks, you know, you're less likely to um, make those mistakes. Um, however, if you're just using the write a check, yes, you can accidentally type in the wrong number. And when it shows up on your bank, it's that's where you'll find your discrepancy is that maybe you accidentally recorded a written check uh, for the wrong amount. And um, it shows up in your bank as a completely different charge. Okay, so that would be an example of what where you would find that you went wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna so those are my checks for the those are the checks that have cleared so far. And if you notice, all of my accounts, right? It, they're they started out bold. Now they're all regular font. Okay. So then now the next thing it's going to ask you to do is to check all your deposits that you have made. So here I've made a total of three deposits, okay? I made one on the 30th, 30th, and 31st, okay? In the amounts of 249 1950 and 1177. So I'm going to go ahead and look here. Uh, I'm sorry, not here. Look on my deposit side and look, I have exactly three 
and they're all dated 30, 30, 31st, and for all those same amounts right here. So I have a thousand and I have a 249 and a thousand uh, 177. So I'm going to go ahead and click all of those. Now, now that that's exactly what I saw that was in my bank statement, I'm going to go ahead and check down here. Now, when I check down here, I'm still going to see that, wait, I only cleared out $13,000, okay? And my ending balance difference is still $8,000 over. I'm still missing $8,000 that, um, I have a discrepancy for, as in, um, I have an amount that is over, um, uh, by $8,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check my bank statement real quick. And if I notice, if I just make sure I read everything carefully, I notice I have a small section right here that says, um, that says other withdrawals. And if I look at this carefully on the 31st, I actually withdrew $8,000. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. And then before I even noticed, before I was going to do anything like that, I if I just notice on my home, on my little screen here, I have $8,000 overdue. I want to go ahead and check on things I have not clicked before or things that I have, uh, that have not cleared. And I notice that, well... I also have this $8,000 right here that I have not checked off. So once I check that off and I know that I validate it with my bank statement because this is a uh, withdrawal, I can go ahead and click it. And what's going to happen is, boom, that $8,000 has been cleared and we are at zero. So we are exactly where we need to be. And... That is your bank reconciliation there. You're going to go ahead and complete the uh, bank reconciliation, okay? And when you do that, it's going to um, pop. It's going to record it for you. And then you're going to get this little window here. Now, what this window does is it, pop, it populates a summary as well as a detailed um, uh, report on what you just have done. And in this case, I want to select both and I'm going to go ahead and display. So with my multiple windows, it's going to show me um, my summary for my bank um, reconciliation. So here, this is where I've already cleared out. This is my detail report here. And um, if I, I can either print that out or close it out. And then here is my um, summary right here. Or, yes. All right. So as you can see, all the charges that have went through, which all my checks have happened. And it's also going to give me detailed um, information about all my deposits and with my starting balance and how I ended up here. Okay. So here just gives you a small report. And I am going to go ahead and not print this and clear it out. So as far as bank reconciliations, that is pretty much um, that is pretty much half of chapter five. Okay. Any questions about bank reconciliation? It is by far the easiest thing that you can do. Because all you're doing is comparing what's in your actual QuickBooks and then comparing it to your actual bank. Okay. Now, what happens when um, you when your balances don't actually match? What happens when you find a discrepancy or you found an error in your bank reconciliation? Now, this is where this, this is going to get difficult as you go move on forth. Now, since we just completed our first uh, bank reconciliation and we had no problems, but let's say that $8,000 never showed up on our bank and 
um, it's on our records, but it just it just never cleared out. Then we would have to go either um, search the bank and ask where this um, where we took our withdrawals from, and other things like that. Now, here the book is going to tell you how to find these errors. Okay, so you have a few options when you are actually finding these errors. Now, what you could do is you could find it through the previous bank reconciliation, uh, the, um, yeah, for the pre previous bank reconciliation, um, and, um, you know, searching the, the, searching the actual, um, discrepancy there. Or you have option number two, which is to undo the bank reconciliation and just start there. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and click my reconcile. And what's going to happen is I do have a window here and it, I do have the option. Do I need to undo my last um, uh, reconciliation? In this case, I'm going to undo it and it's going to give me this window and I'm going to say continue. So that means it's going to take and reverse everything that you've done so far. So if I were to redo this, everything would be the same. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the same numbers. Now, again, um, let's say, um, yeah, so it was, what, $10 here, and it was $8.62, and my ending balance was, um, oopsies. Yeah, fifty four twenty four ninety two. Um, okay, so here I notice that that's my ending balance right now. So here, this is because I'm starting on this date. I need to change it back to January thirty first. Um, and it's for my checking account. So hold on, I don't know what happened because I just undid my. Bank reconciliation. Let me close this window out and see if I what happens when I open it again. So when I open it again, see now it, it reversed my transaction and here I'm starting at 14,000 again, which is what I want to do. Again, so here now I'm going to go ahead and press the information in. So 5424.92, um, I think. 92. This was $10. And then this was um, $8.62. Now you're going to make sure everything is there. Everything should be there. And you're going to go ahead and click continue. So again, let's say I know that one of these checks have not cleared. Or for example, um, I wrote something wrong in here. What you, can, what you can do is you can go ahead and come here and you're going to click modify. Okay. When you click modify, you're going to be brought back to that same exact window and you're going to locate your discrepancy, okay? Now, when I click locate my discrepancy, it's going to literally ask me where I'm going to go find these errors and how I'm going to find it. So again, we can either find it in previous reports. Maybe we accidentally can't, we had a check that was voided. So we have to go back and we have to modify it or fix it. So there, that these are the options that you're given here. You can either um, find it in a previous report or you can either just um, find it in a discrepancy report. So what a discrepancy report is, is if I were to go ahead and proceed with my $8,000 um, difference, I'd be able to click my discrepancy report and it would show me exactly where to find my $8,000 or it will tell me that my rec reconciliation was over by $8,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that information and I'm just going to go dig, dig, dig until I find that $8,000. Okay. So that is what, that is um, one way to do it. Another one is a previous report. So again, it's going to ask you, well, what kind of previous report do you want to look at? You want a summary? what kind of, um, you know, what uh, account you want to be looking at. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull up a report. And you're going to notice that if you if you go through that, you're going to see, oh, I made a deposit for $8,000.
but for some, or I made a withdrawal for eight thousand dollars, and for some reason my bank did not record it. Um, okay, so this is where you're gonna actually be looking at all the stuff, just so you are able to find it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel, cancel, and yes. So here everything is back to square one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and uh, select all this and select all of this. And do I get to zero? No, I'm way over by one thousand dollars and six six seventy four. And what I notice here is I accidentally tapped this number because we already have our discrepancy in here. Or I mean, we already have our bank charge in here. Um, and interest we've already collected for $8.62. So here I'm still off by $276. Oh, here it is. I forgot to check this one off. Okay. Now I am at zero, okay? All right, and now that I'm okay and I'm at zero, I can go ahead and continue my reconciliation. And then I'm gonna get the reports to show, to show up again right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and either print or I can just close the window. So again, that's what happens when you have a discrepancy in your files and you found and you need to look for it all right that's why it's very important that when you start off um your bank balance right so it tells you in the book here you need to start your bank balance right it has to be matching if not then you probably need to go fix that error before or go find the error there before you can even start your reconciliation so they want to make sure that's the number one rule is that your beginning balance matches together, okay? And that is that part there. Any questions about anything in particular to the reconciliation? Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so this, here's the next section here. We're going to be talking about um, uh, what happens when we, either we write a balanced check or um, the customer writes us a faulty check, okay? So there are two couple, uh, there are a couple ways of going around this, all right? If we're, um, right now, I'm going to start focusing on my customer first, and then we can talk about what happens when we write a faulty check. So it happens, especially for customers, right? It happens, writing a faulty check. They probably thought they had enough money to pay for the services, but when they write that check and you deposit into your bank, what's gonna happen is it's gonna tell you um, that that person did not have enough money in their bank and they're gonna charge you a fee on top of that because you attempted to um, you attempted to overdraw someone else's account. And because of that, we have to um, charge you money to return that check. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's what um, you're going to get charged for that. Now, normally, depending on what bank you use, um, I know that, for example, Bank of America, if you withdraw over the money that you have in your bank, that's an automatic $35 charge. And on top of that, an automatic $10 if you write an actual faulty check. So that's a lot of money right there. So it is not very, it's like, you know, that's why we have the check register for a reason. And if we do our accounting good, we know that we should have this much money by the end of the day. Now, that's also dependent on you making your deposits on time as well, because you have to remember there, is, there could be possibly a one to three day business day delay, okay? Now, um, again, we refer to these bounced checks as NSF, 
which is uh, stands for non-sufficient funds, okay? So, um, yes, if a customer writes a faulty check, okay, we're going to go ahead and look at this example here. So, here's our favorite customer, Mr. Bob Mason. He's a really good customer of ours, but he's also... Um, he's also written us uh, some bad checks before. So let's go ahead and look at Bob Mason. We're going to look at his check for um, um, his check number 2526 um, for $1,077. Uh, 1177 Okay. So what's going to happen is they said they this you go to receive payments, right? Um, for many cases, I've tried this and it did not actually work for me. They tell you to go click the previous button. Oh, and it actually, okay, it worked this time. So here, um, I, when I click that, I'll be able to see his check that he has written to us. Okay. Now I've also be able to find that via through the customer center. I can go ahead and click his, um, his uh, bill, and I can see his check right there. Now, as you can see, this one, he made a customer payment with his check for $26.25. And if you notice, it is for the amount for $11.77. So here, um, with this actual payment, we're going to record that this is a bounce check. So how can you do that? If you go all the way up to the top, you're going to see a little icon that says um, record bounced check. So what that's going to do is it's going to automatically take that money out of your bank because you don't have it anymore. Um, right. It's a faulty check. You received zero dollars out of that thousand um, out of that thousand dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a window to um, record this, um, that to record this faulty check. Now, what it's going to ask you is, well, how much did the bank charge you? Well, the bank charged me ten dollars. That's what the book says. Okay. Oh, and I press enter. <laughs> Back. Okay. Good. Okay, so the first thing that we want to know is, okay, so the bank has charged us $10, right? Because they decided to return that bank fee for you. Um, I believe it was in February. Um, I'm going to say February 16 because I don't remember what the real date is. I think it, it, it is in February of 2019. Okay, and then it's going to ask you, well, where is that going to go? Bank service charges. Okay, so they're charging us already $10 because we um, deposited a um, faulty check. Now, there is no class to this one. I think it's overhead um, because we don't want it to affect um, either store. So we go ahead and put overhead. Now, then it's going to ask you, well, how much do you want to charge the customer because they wrote, they sent you a faulty check? Now, you want to be reasonable and not overcharge. So I want to make sure that I get 100% um, of the profit. So I'm going to make sure that I write, I charge him money enough to pay my bank, but enough to pocket as in my pocket. $10 because he wrote me a faulty check. And then I'm going to click next. So then it's going to give you this report here. And what's happened is it's going to, when you, when you fill it out this way and you record your rebound, your bounce check on the actual um, invoice itself or on the actual customer payment, it's going to take that actual invoice or that bill that you sent him and it's going to attach it to it. So the next time you open this bill or invoice, you're going to see his original amount, which was $1177, plus an additional 
charge, okay? And you're going to validate this as well, okay? So here it's going to say that you need to charge him a full um, $20, okay? And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and click finish. Then if you have sound, you're going to get beep of approval and see if you come here to customer payments, you're going to see that now he owes you an additional um, $20. So it was $11.77, now it's $11.97, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this window just so um, we can go ahead and clear out the information here. And um, what I'm going to do is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have Mr. Mason Bob pay for this. Um, he's going to pay for this. Uh, a couple days later. So he realizes he um, wrote a faulty check, so he's going to write us a new check. So I'm going to go ahead and click Receive Payments. Um, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So here, Customer Pay Us, and this time it's Bob Mason. Now, I could have just gone, went ahead and just done that, but it's okay. So here I notice that everything's going to populate for the, his actual transaction. So he owes us $11.97. And um, that is exactly what he wrote us a check for, $11.97. So he's gonna write us a check. And, um, okay, I can't really, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why. 11. So, okay. All right, so I'm supposed, I, um, I'm having trouble. I can't click the stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and, no. I'm going to go ahead and receive payment. Um, I'm going to go to my customer center. I'm going to go to Bob Mason so I can see his uh, Bob Mason, Bob Mason. Um, and I'm going to view all. Okay, so here's all of his stuff, and um, I have my invoice here, invoice here, payments, payments, invoice. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and click one of these invoices, and I notice that um, I notice that this is an invoice that he's already past due and paid for. So huh, let me click out of this. Okay. All right. So it is 937 and unfortunately my program has crashed. So um, let's go ahead and take a break. 